Pay. In this video we're going to look at secondary storage devices. In the description below I'll put the links to the different sections so you can skip to the bit that you need. Secondary storage devices are the parts of the computer system that saves the data, files, programs and operating system. The key part of this definition is saves. You can't use the word stores to explain what a storage device does. So the word you need is saves. The secondary storage device is a key part of the system. If the secondary storage device fails, then all of your files, data, pictures, games, game progress and anything like that will be lost. All types of secondary storage are non-volatile. That means that when the computer system is turned off, the contents remain. Sometimes the exam board refer to them as storage devices rather than secondary storage devices, but it means the same thing. There are four main types of secondary storage device, magnetic, optical, solid state, and the cloud. Magnetic hard drives usually exist inside desktop computers. The reason why they exist inside desktop computers is because they have moving parts which makes them not portable. Desktop computers have to be plugged in at all times so they don't need a secondary storage device that can be portable. Solid state hard drives don't have moving parts. Because of this they are generally more expensive than magnetic hard drives but they can be portable so they can be put into computer systems like laptops. Flash memory is just a smaller version of solid state. It's often used in embedded systems such as cameras. Optical storage is the correct name for CDs, DVDs and Blu-rays. These generally don't have a very large capacity, so that means they can't store a lot of data. So they're often used for backups. They're also quite small in terms of size and you can stack them on top of each other. The cloud storage is storage that is online. You can't physically see it or touch it. A big advantage of cloud storage is that usually it saves things automatically. So if you're working on a Google Docs file, for example, you don't need to keep pressing save, it will save automatically. If you are working and saving your files to secondary storage and the secondary storage device fails, all of your files will be lost. If you want to add more secondary storage to your computer, it won't make the computer faster. Generally speaking, it doesn't affect how quickly your computer runs. Deciding which of the four types of secondary storage is right for your computer system comes down to the positives and negatives that each has. Capacity refers to how much data can be stored on the device. Cost refers to how expensive or cheap the device is. Reliability is how likely the device is to break. Portability is whether or not the device can be moved safely without breaking. Durability refers to how many times the device can be used before it breaks and size refers to the physical dimensions of the device. So for example, solid state has a low durability because data can only be read to and written from the device a set amount of times. Another example is the cost of the cloud. Usually the cloud storage comes with a small amount of data for free, but it can get very expensive very quickly if additional data is required. Finally, let's have a look at this exam question. Most computer systems use at least one storage device. Explain one reason why a storage device is needed in most computer systems, two marks. So to start off with, as always, you should use the correct definition. So secondary storage allows the files, data, programs and operating system to be saved. You then need to explain, well, why does it need to do that? The main reason is because it's non-volatile. So this means that even when the power is switched off, all of the contents would remain. It would be pretty annoying if every single time you turned your computer off, everything got deleted. 